Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I think some of you are wondering how is it going to be to actually be a medical student. So we have someone with us on the show, and let me quickly introduce you to Neha. So Neha Masrani. Hi Neha, Hi, welcome I'm to the so show. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. And Neha is going to tell us today about. how life is at a medical college so let me quickly get on to neha life in medical college is very very interesting most of the students feel that when you're taking medical there's lots of studying and it's all work and no play mm-hmm. and everybody is just asking you how many hours do you study in a yeah. day and when i go for social gatherings they ask me oh you're here aren't you doing medicine how can you be here <laughs> and it's actually not like that i mean yes there is hard work there is a ton of study involved but the key is good time management right so tell us a little bit about what are the kinds of stuff you do there are lots of extra curricular activities so firstly if you are if you don't want to do anything related to medicine at all right you have all your college festivals which is cultural oh, and you okay. have sports events right. so there's inter college dance there's inter college fashion show there's band night so you have an entire month which is filled with all these activities yeah, and i'm sure the students are organizing the festivals yeah. themselves and getting sponsors and yeah it, it's it's quite fun because there are people in the pr team who are trying to get sponsors and you're interacting with people from all college just of your state or right. your country so it's it's quite a lot of fun right sure and coming back to something related to what you do in the field of medicine related to medicine but not studying would there be something like so that there are a lot of fun things as well that you can do there are these medical college festivals as well so you could do a case presentation or you have your research projects so you could do a research throughout the year and present it as a paper or a poster in okay. that festival okay. you can write uh, for a medical journal You could also participate in a, participate in all the workshops. So there are suturing skills, there's trauma management, there's airway management, ECG, and so many more things. Wow! So these are like workshops where they are sort of simulating. <laughs> yeah, and they they're a lot of fun. So they give you all these rubber models, and you get to learn to suture on them. And you usually have professors teaching you how to do it. <laughs> That's how you develop a liking for a particular field in MBBS. You're also part of something called the Medical Students Association of India, which sounds really like a lot of stuff happening. This organization that I'm a part of, it's at all India level, right? And we also have international associations. So we send a lot of student for exchanges. Mm-hmm. We have training programs. Twice a year, there are these meets for which we represent our country. So we have massive flags, and we're oh. representing our nation, and we have chants. and we also have the same meet at a national level so you get to meet people who are going through the same thing wow so you can go for a training program to another country or can you actually go and train uh, in one of these workshops as well so you can do both so once you attend a training program you could actually go and train other people that is one aspect of it other thing is you can go for exchange programs we we already i have a lot of my friends have gone for exchanges so which are some of the countries that participate in these there are a lot of countries uh, germany italy spain a uh, lot catalonia a lot of countries have participated wow. in this so neha tell us about your own personal experience on an exchange program <laughs> so i went for a, a general assembly okay. so this year to represent msai i went to malta and there are people from over 90 countries wow. so throughout the day if you're working hard at night there's something different planned for you yeah. so there's a national food and drinks party where you get to see other people's food the cuisine oh. the drinks so it's it's really <laughs> interesting and this one night is a cultural night so not only does it give you exposure to what are the kinds of challenges that each one of these countries, countries is facing but yeah. it also sort of tells you the people there you build a network of people or doctors potentially across the world that is quite true back at home we do a lot of interesting things so uh, usually we have a lot of social service mm-hmm. we do a lot of events which is not only for the public in terms of public health or reproductive health or human rights we also cover medical students so what problems are there with medical education mm. we have these online webinars where a professor from the us can actually teach and we can watch sitting right at home so you don't have to go abroad to experience something different and if you do not have a committee which is functioning at your own college there is icmr so mm-hmm. uh, it's indian medical council of research they have a short term studentship 
Right. So it's for about two months. You apply for a research project, and um, you get to work for two months with a guide from your own college, and you get to like a simulation for how a research project is, and it's extremely helpful. So if you were to take a look into your daily life, your academic life, apart from some of these exciting activities, how many hours a day typically would you study, or is there something like that about every day? How many hours a day? A lot of people ask me this question that how many hours are we expected to study? Well, there's there's nothing like you're supposed to study five hours a day or ten hours a day. Well, before an exam, if you see in any field, everybody studies a lot. But on a regular basis, the interesting part about our life is every day in the morning we have to go to the hospital and we have to attend clinical postings. So we're posted in different departments, and it's very interesting to learn on a patient. Mm. So if you study during your clinical postings. Pay attention during lectures and go in the evening and read up a little bit. Then you're quite sorted. You don't have to give up on a particular hobby because you're a medical student. I haven't done that till now. So yeah, these clinical postings at different departments somehow really sounds interesting. It makes me feel as though you're interning and in, you know, as though take an engineer for example, he's interning in different parts of the shop floor all the time. It is actually that interesting because in whole of first year we learn what is essentially normal in the body. Second year onwards, we go more towards lab work and clinical posting. So that's where we learn what is the deviation from normal and how it would manifest clinically. So we would learn on a patient. So we would attend outpatient departments and see what the patient is complaining, take his history, or uh, try to elicit all the signs mm. and symptoms. So if you are posted in, say, pediatric department for a month, which is really cute, and there are so many babies, and you have to extract the history from the mother because the baby is not going to say, "I have a fever." <laughs> if you're posted in a surg surgery department, then you get to assist in surgeries, and you get to like see the surgery happening live, which is very, very interesting. Whereas if you are in obstetrics and gynecology, you actually get to see a patient in labor and while she delivers the baby. So it's it's a wonderful experience yeah. all in all. Then you decide, and the right. PG program typically at the end of this five and a half years, right? Uh, you straight can go into a PG program. It's exactly like how you give your 12 standard exam and then you give your. MHT CET or your All India CET as entrances. As soon as you finish your final year and you get a pass certificate, you start your internship. Right. And say in November you have your entrance exams. Okay. Now entrance exams again are at All India level and at state level, and uh, they are multiple choice questions. And depending on your score and your rank, you can choose a field. And there's this idea that the number of seats in India for a postgraduate program are very limited. That is true. Yeah. They are limited as compared to your undergraduate seats. So there are there are these national websites will, mm. which will give you the number of seats. Okay. So you do have an idea about uh, what's happening and how many seats are available in the particular specialty that you like. Okay. And your is what are you particularly interested to pursue? I'm actually an aspiring surgeon. Wow. I, I really enjoyed my first experience in the operation theater when I assisted for a surgery. It was it was wonderful. It's something that I really really enjoyed. Yeah. Recently, there was this news about the entrance mm -hmm. exam getting cancelled, and you know they're trying to combine some of these exams. So how does that affect the students? It's difficult to say how it's affecting the students because you're you're studying the whole day. You've put so much effort into that. And also unifying does make a lot of sense because a student has to give so many different exams for private medical colleges and deemed medical colleges and your all India and your state entrances. So unifying it is one of the solutions to our problems. But again, students do have a lot of pressure because they've been preparing for a particular exam two to three years in advance, yeah. and changing the system. Is kind of harsh, so it's a very complicated situation right now. So, just as a ballpark, the PG in India is three years. Yes, it is three years, and it, it's irrespective of what specialization. A postgraduate exam, there are two exams which you can give at All India level. Right. These some of the colleges which you give with All India PG, which I'm saying is the older system, is recognized by the MCI, mm -hmm. and these are masters. So it's your MS masters in surgery. So that could be MS, could be in ENT, it could be ophthalmology, it could be general surgery, and your MD, which is medicine, which is pediatrics and medicine. So these two degrees are usually from a government college. Okay. These are usually three years. Okay. Whereas a diploma, which is a DNB examination, is another board. These are mainly private colleges, right. mainly not not hundred percent. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So these diplomas are slightly different time duration. So it depends on what do you take up. Right. So if it's family medicine, it might not be three years. 
Another question that a lot of viewers asked us on the previous video that we put up right. was you know, on the subject of private and government medical colleges right. and there seems to be this should I go to a government college or should right. I go to because the cost is different, the hmm. whole sort of entrance procedure is different. different. So what's your view on that? I think the viewers should uh, get a complete knowledge of what is the difference between a government and a private medical institution and then decide for themselves what's the best thing to do. A government institution is, is basically a government college or a government hospital which is providing their patients health care at a very subsided fee. Right. The patient load is a lot. Mm. In the three hours you will get to learn a lot. Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to that, private medical institutions are a little bit expensive. Mm. So mm. the infrastructure is very good. Right. The faculties are excellent because right. you are paying more. Of course. But you have to compare the patient load of all the different colleges. The difference arises in infrastructure, in cost, that is the fee, and also the patient influx. All three must be considered okay. before you opt for a particular institution. Right, and you're at a government medical I'm college. I'm at a government medical okay. college. Okay, right. yeah, we've heard of MD, we've heard of MS, but DNB seems to be a term that not too many would be familiar with. So would you want to talk a little bit about this? DNB is also a very interesting course. It's almost equivalent to your MD and MS. The exam is different, so the institutions are different. They constitute mainly private medical colleges and your private hospitals and uh, the infrastructure is really, really good. So okay. people do prepare for DNB as well because okay. they're almost equivalent degrees and they're equally good. So DNB has a lot of these courses which MD and MS might not offer. For okay. example, Diploma in Family Medicine or Family Physician is not there as an MD. And talking about the fellowship which happens sometimes after the post-graduation because when we read these titles yeah, in front does, of yeah. a doctor's <laughs> offices, you've got so many abbreviations there. So it's, it's interesting because medical is an ongoing process of learning and studying. So uh, you could do a diploma out of fellowship directly after MBBS or you could do your MD or your MS that is your postgraduate and do a fellowship or a diploma again. So a fellowship essentially is from uh, the Royal Colleges and it usually, it's, it's interesting because it means that you're committing you se yourself to updating your knowledge regularly. So that could be via conferences or workshops. We've spoken a lot about how to go ahead with our career in the field of medicine. But just for example, if there's a student who does his MBBS and mm. feels at the end of five and a half years that I'm not entirely sure I want to be in a Mm -hmm. interactive uh, job with patients curing them directly. Mm -hmm. What are the alternatives open to them after this program? So a, a, a student has a lot of alternatives. Throughout the four and a half years that we're studying, there are over 17 subjects that we study. A postgraduate course could be done in any of the subjects. The first two years are actually preclinical, so we learn a lot of these subjects which do not involve much patient interaction. Okay. So histopathology or biochemistry, microbiology, all these are wonderful fields. Uh, the patient interaction is a little bit less in the preclinical fields, but it is very interesting to study the organisms and even uh, your preventive and social medicine is extremely interesting. So a medical student can choose from the preclinical or the cl clinical fields. And if he decides that no, he's completely tired of this, a couple of my friends are preparing for fields like they're, they're preparing for civil services exams. Okay. okay. Then uh, a lot of people get into MBA and study hospital management, which is equally important right. because a doctor is better equipped to manage a hospital course, than anybody else. Of so when you say civil services, they probably go into public health. Uh, civil services usually with the government. With the government. So they have these Indian railway. Uh, positions and factories. It's a common entrance test which is held uh, right. by the government. Right. It's called the UPSC right. exam. Uh, could you do a law as well? Yes, I, I have heard of people taking up law yeah. after that because your forensic medicine and your LLB would also go hand in hand. So after an MBBS, I would say your options do not narrow down. They completely open up. You know, okay. you have so many options to choose from, what you're interested in, and so many things coming up every day. Sure, so sure. there's your minimal invasive surgeries came up a couple of years back, which are very interesting. Right. Also nuclear medicine. These fields are, are so upcoming and so yeah, important. Yeah. What we're trying to share with you is there are loads and loads of things you can do. The pre-med in the US keeps right. that option open for longer. 
but don't be dissuaded by the MBBS program that we have in India. You can have a lot of fun and the options are still very much open to you. Okay, Suneya, share with us some of the most fun moments you've had during this program. I've had two really fun moments. The first one is when I assisted in a surgery. I actually helped hold the retractors and see the entire surgery. And I even got to take a stitch on the bowel, which was amazing. I think I was so happy the whole day I was <laughs> jumping around. And the second one is when I saw a normal labour for the first time. I mean, and when the kid was born, how they take care of the whole child, like a neonate, which is so small. And we saw, you know, how they give the vaccines and how they clean the airways. It was quite fun. Wow, I think your idea of fun is a little <laughs> different from mine. <laughs> but it does sound like fun. So thank you so much Neha for sharing all of this with us. It was so wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for calling me. I hope everybody did get a lot of information about MBBS. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle chatchat101 or at Instagram chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below. And if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.